Today I'm in Lakeland, Florida, home of Sun and Fun, at the Aerospace Center for Excellence. Behind me here is a Zenith CH750 Cruiser. It's going to be part of an Able Flight program. Hi, my name is Andy Evans. I'm the Aircraft Maintenance Manager here at Sun and Fun and the Aerospace Center for Excellence. Um, quick little bit about myself. I, myself and a team of uh, volunteers and uh, students from the Central Florida Aerospace Academy, uh, we, we maintain all of the assets here at Sun and Fun, flying and museum assets. Um, I started here about two years ago and right after I started, this beautiful little kit showed up and it became pretty much the focal point of what we do uh, moving forward. Uh, so this aircraft is a Xena 750 Cruiser. Uh, we've named it the Spirit of Lakeland uh, and uh, this aircraft will be used uh, for a program we're, we're getting started here. We're partnering with a, with a group called Able Flight and they offer scholarships to people with disabilities. Uh, the aircraft that we are building specifically is being built to teach people that have limited to no use of their legs how to fly. So when the aircraft is done, uh, we're going to put it into a flying club and the student, well, once they have graduated, will be able to come back and continue using those flying privileges. Oftentimes when you are disabled, uh, the, there's a financial hardship there and it just becomes impossible to own an aircraft. So this will allow that person to be able to come back and, and hopefully be able to afford flying uh, beyond their, earning their certificate. A um, couple of unique features of the aircraft. Uh, the airplane is going to have a set of hand controls that are directly connected to the rudder, to the rudder pedals. Um, the other second key feature of the airplane is the airplane is going to have a Garmin G3X with an iPad for moving map and such. And we are integrating a product from Zenith's other product line of the 750 Super Duty. Uh, and we're going to mount the unpanel from that onto the Zenith 750 Cruiser. So that's a very unique uh, feature. You will be able to roll up to the airplane in your wheelchair slide the entire panel out of the way like an articulating TV mount and climb into the airplane and then pull the panel back to where, where you need it to be. Um, because we're doing that, we've cut all the panel and, and everything out of the way, so the visibility is going to be absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's actually quite, uh, quite interesting if you look at the stock parts versus the you know, unpanel parts, how much more visibility you get. So it's, uh, it's actually quite quite interesting how it's working out so far. Yeah, so we're we're using the standard, the stock Zenith center stick, uh, the yoke. And um, so you're still gonna have pitch and roll uh, in your right hand. In the left hand here, this is gonna be the bar connected to the rudder pedals. So you'll have uh, steering on the ground and in flight, and then uh, we'll have an integrated uh, handbrake. So when you apply the brake here, you'll have both, both brakes will grab uh, evenly. The nice thing about it is the right side of the airplane is going to have, for a CFI or any, anybody else, it's got tow brakes. So it's, uh, it's equipped both ways, if you will. So is that essentially the only thing that's really different for somebody that I guess would be um, a paraplegic to be able to, to fly, correct? Just to have the rudders by hand and brakes. Yep, so yeah, so they'll have, they'll have hand controls. Um, and then uh, we've because we don't have a panel we had to mount the the throttle cable uh, kind of on its own there but the the major difference yes is the the handbrake and the rudder bar is there any other additional um, needed for like a seat belt system to keep a little bit more control of, of being upright or from sliding back to you know that kind of is like a five point versus a three point or yeah so uh, so that's one of the, the questions myself and the students when we're when we're building this airplane and we're actually designing and thinking about um, You got to think like somebody that's disabled, right? So um, the stock Zenith seat belts are a three-point system um, We talked to uh, the good folks at Viking aircraft engines and they are selling a, a modification kit for the Zenith cruiser and, and Stoll that's a four-point application so um, that will be, uh, it takes it from the, from the top down here and it mounts, it mounts in the, the top pillar here. So we'll have a full four point harness in the aircraft with a quick release too. If they had to get out, it, it's a very, very safe system.
Hey, before we get too deep into this, let me thank our sponsors that make all of this possible. Great companies like Airworks, AirTech Coatings, Acme Aero, Clemens Insurance Agency, Stoll Creek Aviation. So take a moment after this video to say hello to all of them and remember to check out the affiliate links in the description below. And remember, just build it. Let's get back to it. All right, Andy, tell me something else that's unique about this build here with the uh, the power plant up front. So it's, uh, it's using somewhat new technology, if you will. We're using a, a Continental O200D. So uh, the D is the newest version. It came out really uh, at the forefront of the Skycatcher days, the Cessna Skycatcher. Um, so a little bit lighter weight than the original version. Uh, they've upgraded the starter, the, the uh, alternator. Uh, and changed a, a few things around in the accessory case and in the design of the engine. Um, so I wanted to use the O200 for a couple reasons. Um, for one, they're absolutely simple to work on. For two, I can teach anybody to work on them. Uh, that was really the, the focal point. I'm dealing with high school kids. I'm working with um, people that are um, very young adults. So it uh, it's a lot easier to work in, a, in that environment and, uh, and they actually get some value out of it. The, uh, the other reason is uh, with the sensor technology and all that in the Garmin G3X is we can trick this engine out and have all the technology that, that we need at our fingertips as well. So kind of offered both uh, best of both worlds for us and uh, Continental Aerospace came on board and said uh, we'd like to help you out with an engine. So that was, that was the final say in the, in the whole matter. Uh, and then Sense and H propellers down the street here in Plant City, uh, they came on board with the project as well, and they came up with a with a propeller for it. So uh, I can't wait to get it to get it running here shortly. Is this uh, the the legacy style of Continental O200 is somewhere sub 100 horsepower? What is this rated at, uh, and how do they acquire the new horsepower? Yeah, so there there's. Uh, just as advertised 100 horsepower uh, is is what it is so on the same topic of engine i see a really nicely done exhaust system is that from continental or who does that come from yeah so that uh when you when you call zenith up and say we want the zenith cruiser we want to do this uh, they will ask you what type of engine you want so pretty much firewall forward this all came as a kit so the exhaust the engine mount all of the the hardware and bits and pieces the hoses all came as a kit um, so that was really, really nice. The baffle kit actually was probably one of the nicest parts about it. Um, so yeah, it, it was all bagged out and exactly how we needed it. And do they also have a ready-made cowling for this or do you have to fabricate that on your own? Yeah, so it did come with a cowl as well. Um, I personally think it's the nicest looking one of all the, all the <laughs> manufacturers, so. Um, uh, we had one on a Zenith uh, 750 Stoll. I fell in love with that with that cowl design, and it kind of fit into how I wanted to build this airplane as well. So, uh, nice fiberglass cowl. Uh, we're probably going to do the hinge pin system that seems to be working quite well for for the RV crowd. There's some uh, yawn, and everybody's doing them uh, on their Zeniths as well. So, yeah, you mentioned uh, mating this to some newer technology. Uh, I assume you're talking about instrumentation. So what are you mating to this for, or what are you using for the instrumentation on engine management? Yeah, so we're gonna have uh, all four cylinders, EGT and CHT. Uh, we'll be able to monitor that. Uh, all the other information, uh, it, you know, it's all digital world now. So we'll have that information displayed on the G3X. Uh, it's, it's pretty fascinating how, how amazing the technology is these days. Um, we were talking a little bit about weight before and how the engine is a little bit uh, lighter than it used to be. Um, that's the and never ending debate nowadays in the engine world is one engine weighs more or this engine weighs less is puts out more power. Um, we understood that when we picked the engine as well. Uh, there's a couple other things we've done. So we're running an EarthX battery so we're saving some weight there. And vertical power came to the rescue for us uh, and they, they supplied us with a PPX system, a PPS system, as well as the vertical power sport. So we're running all digital uh, circuit breakers and uh, solid state relays up front. So um, the, the information at our fingertips powered by the G3X is, is really gonna be top notch 
compared to compared to what it used to be. So there's a different angle here to, to show the the non instrument panel or the unpanel as they're calling it, huh? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> the uh, and it's it's actually been quite a challenge. It's been a lot of fun. That's the fun of experimental aircraft, right? Is is uh, figuring out the way to make it work. Um, of course, Zenith makes it look easy, and they just you know they come out with it, and it's it's great. But everything from how how everything is mounted. Uh, of course, we went with the G5 as a secondary screen uh, uh, with a battery backup. So if we did have an electrical failure, we would still have some primary instrumentation. Um, but even something as simple as putting the G5 in there, it has to go in a specific spot, which means I can't put switches there and I can't do other things. So uh, that's been a lot of fun in designing how that works. Um, so normally this space right here, we would have you know all of our GPS boxes, our comm boxes, uh, all the all of the avionics that drive the glass screens. Um, since we don't have that, we had to get creative with where we parked everything. So we have made racks, and everything fits underneath the seats. Um, and we've used uh, I'm drawing a blank on his name right now, my, my kid airplane or something. Well, well, the good thing about that is that you are either on or forward of the CG, so you can kind of stack that up there and doesn't doesn't affect anything. Yeah, and, and really, I've, I've got my vertical power sport behind the seats, if you will. So my I've got a couple power runs going back, but everything else, the wiring is actually pretty compact. So um, it's actually, I think, making it easier to wire. Um, we've had a little help with the with the wire harness on the Garmin side, but... Uh, everything else is is so close and, and near each other. It's it's really uh, kind of becoming a little easier to do it that way. What all other than this project goes on here at the Aerospace Center for Excellence in Lakeland? Yeah, so that's a great question. So everybody's heard about most everybody's heard about Sun and Fun, the, the big uh, annual air show that we have here down in March or April, uh, spring break for aviators, as we call it. Um, that is a fundraiser for all the educational program that we do. So, so Sun and Fun is a financial uh, economic driver for all the programs we do. Um, we do a combination, so 51 weeks out of the year, we do over 90 events a year on, on campus here. Anything from car shows to weddings and birthday parties um, to you know other fun events that, that are going on right now uh, the calendars kind of blank but there are all kinds of really uh, uh, fun ideas that, that are being proposed so um, we we really operate and use that that revenue and income to drive all the other programming that we do um, so this project is being built by students from Central Florida Aerospace Academy so we're across the street from this hangar is a public high school and it has an aviation uh, focus so there's five aviation career paths that come out of that high school i am blessed to be a mentor i'm a, both a flight instructor and a and an aircraft mechanic so um as as these kids are coming up and growing up in their career they're coming over here helping me build the airplane uh in many cases we've had Road, speed bumps and road bumps along the way you know how do we get around this complication and the students will come and say oh, we can design that in SolidWorks and then partners on the airport here Gulf Coast Avionics is a great example say yeah, br bring the design over we'll, we'll cut it out on our panel cutter. Be sure to check out Zenith Aircraft's Rudder Building Workshop December 3rd and 4th here in Lakeland. Like and follow us on Facebook and Instagram as we post nearly daily aviation content. Remember to like and subscribe. Check out our sister channel EAC Aviation Podcasts on YouTube and find the audio on iTunes, Google Play, and Podbean. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.